Hi, I'm Stella, and welcome to Salakot Cinemas, where I talk about movies because I watch too many and have too many opinions about them. I'm gonna pause a little on the Christmas movie reviews and talk about something that is not holiday season related. One of the last movies that I had seen in theaters while we were all blissfully unaware of this hell world that we were going to be thrown into this year was Birds of Prey. Now, before any of you come at me, I know that there were a lot of critiques saying that this was basically a cheap knockoff of Deadpool or Jack Sparrow, but I personally adored it. I thought it was a lot of fun to watch. I think what helped a little was that I went in with very, very, very low expectations thinking that it was going to be terrible since it was hot off the heels of Suicide Squad. However, I was delightfully surprised with how fun it was. The stunts were amazing, the acting was great, and also if you haven't watched any of my other videos or you just haven't caught the hint, I am a queer woman. So seeing this lineup of ladies kicking ass, the inevitable thirsty error is afoot. Say what you want about the characters or the script, but I think you've got to be absolutely blind or bitter and petulant to not think that this movie has brilliant costume design and production design. Now, I'm not gonna be talking about the costuming because A, I'm not gonna pretend that I know that much about it because I don't. B, Modern Girls did a really great analysis on its costuming. Somewhere above, I'll link to that video. And C, production design slash the art department was the department that I mostly worked in when I did briefly work in film. And while I didn't think that the set life was the life for me, I still am a giant nerd when it comes to anything art department related. Okay, I'm gonna take this off. So first of all, what even is production design? According to In Focus Film School, the art department is in charge of the decorative, tangible, visual aesthetic of cinema. It's responsible for how the character dresses, why they dress that way, what their house looks like, what their job cubicle looks like, etc, etc. Every choice that is made by the art department is in service to subtly give the audience a deeper look into the world and the characters. Ultimately, the golden rule of the design is to add to the character that isn't explicitly said in the script or dialogue. As said by K.K. Barrett, the production designer of this film. He's one of my absolute favorites and has notably worked on Her, Lost in Translation, Where the Wild Things Are, and Marie Antoinette. He recently streamed a discussion that he had with Patrice Vermet, another one of my favorite PDs who has worked on a lot of movies with Denis Villeneuve, like Arrival, Sicario, Prisoners, and the upcoming Dune. In the stream, he says that he doesn't want his design to star in the movie. He absolutely makes the musical comparison that he wants his sets to be the rhythm section and not the leading guitarist that's about to go into a solo. Basically, he doesn't want his designs to stand out in comparison to the rest of the movie. So I guess I might be dishonoring him by making this video and zeroing in on his job. But like I said earlier, I'm a complete nerd when it comes to production design. I promise you, I'm very annoying to watch movies with. Anyway, through Barrett's eyes, the beauty of production design isn't just through the heavily art-directed projects, but also within the very simple and understated scenes. Something Something as simple as an office space takes more than just a desk, a chair, and a computer. In that same streaming that Barrett does with Vermette, he talks about how you need to be able to direct the audience's attention, but not steal it to the point that they're looking at something that they're not supposed to. Take this scene, for example. There's a lot going on in this design, but also not. Sure, every desk is relatively personalized and messy with a handful of case files, a coffee mug, a phone, a jacket thrown onto a chair, or a lot of practical lights like a lit lamp. None of the walls are empty, giving us a lot of depth into the shot, and there are lights and set deck on the other side of the windows to clue the audience that there is more going on in this world beyond what is happening just in the scene. But everything is brought together with the use of colors. The whole area is blue, yellow, dull orange, or maybe even green, except for Cassandra Kane, who is one of our main characters being introduced. Our eyes aren't looking at the gun range posters that are pasted onto the wall. We are immediately drawn to the bright pink cast on Cassandra's arm or her burgundy jacket. While the other desks are personalized to a degree, there isn't a vibrant purple thing off in the distance. Instead, everything else is just background noise as we focus in on what we're supposed to. One of my favorite things in any good production design is mess. For world building purposes, the devil is in the details. Even if a character is supposed to be prim and proper, there's always going to be some creases in their clothing or crinkles on the paper to show some use. But in a setting as grimy as Gotham City, which is basically supposed to be New York's evil twin, mess and dirt are absolutely necessary. As Harley narrowly escapes being captured in the beginning, it really does look like we're in the bad side of town. You can see that there are garbage bags strewn across the street. There's even dirt 
and pavement discoloration and weathering on absolutely everything. One of my biggest pet peeves when looking at a set is seeing the streets look super clean, making it obvious that it's a soundstage or in a studio. Gotham is gross. So seeing the uneven gray tones in the pavement or the weird splotches on the top of the roof and the smudges on the store signs really sell the set. Now I feel like it would be a crime to be talking about Birds of Prey without going into the carnival fight scene, which is absolutely... A lot of the departments fall under the direct involvement of the production design such as props, greens, set decoration, set painting, etc. But on top of the aesthetic needs for the camera, the PD needs to keep in mind the physical needs for the camera, ergo having to collaborate with cinematography or even stunts. Like if you put a mirror here, will the whole crew be shown in the shot? Does the director of photography need certain lamps or lighting fixtures in order to do some practical lights? Is there enough room for there to be a dolly track? Is there enough room for the crew to be inside at all? So looking at the set, I can't help but think about how much fun this must have been to design but also what a headache it must have been. The set is integral to even initiating the sequence, i.e. all the ladies going down the slide into said fight. That poor camera operator must have had to slide down that tunnel so many times to get multiple shots of Mary Elizabeth Winstead tackling and stabbing the henchmen. And then we are placed into the hall of mirrors and trampolines that directly affect the choreography and the camera placement. The women are bouncing off trampolines to tackle the enemies. Black Canary maneuvers this weird seesaw thing to drop kick this guy. They use the giant hand things to smack their opponents. Huntress is rebounding off of tongues. And on top of that, they have a rotating stage. And there's the added obstacle of the mirrors that the crew needs to be mindful of. And on top of all of that, the areas that the different ladies are fighting in also ties into each character's color scheme through its lighting and paint. Harley's main color throughout the movie has obviously been vibrant pink. Canary's has been yellow. Huntress's costume has mostly been black. I noticed that Montoya isn't featured that much in this entire scene. It might have been because the other three women have much more acrobatic fighting styles, therefore more visually interesting, since Montoya is more rough and tumble and boxing heavy. However, she is featured for a second protecting Cassandra in her area, which is noticeably red like Cassandra's jacket. There is so much going on and it's beautiful. Not that I can even remember what else has been released this year since I've mostly been watching everything on streaming and it's just all blurred together at this point, but I really, really hope that this movie wins the Oscar for best production design. Not only did it pull through with the very heavily art directed sequences like the last scene, it also did its job and helped build the world of Gotham City in its more mundane scenes as well. Thanks for watching my video where I basically spew out garbage about how much I love pretty things. In the spirit of the last couple of videos, I want to take a second to shout out Morgan L, who is a new subscriber that has binge watched all of my videos and commented on every single one of them. Thank you. This might potentially be the last video that I do this year and also maybe write a bunch of videos for the new year. I don't know yet. I haven't decided. But maybe if you turn on notifications, you'll find out. I've been Salakot Cinemas. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and maybe check out one of my other videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.